checkered flag in the air. And he's going to house it. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another Angle of Pursuit podcast, your fantasy football, sports betting, and NASCAR home. I'm your host, Kyle Robert. You follow me on Twitter at NotoriousKRO. Joining me, mere 24, less than 24 hours at this point, before the game, it's Brian Twining. What's up, Brian? Hi, I don't even know if I should be talking to you right now. Like, this Honestly, is almost... if our podcast doesn't exist starting next week, I would not be surprised. <laughs> I was just going to say, this is almost like sacrilege. The yeah. fact that we are actually discussing as anything. Fa- the fact that we can be as cordial as we are is pretty impressive. I'm not going to lie. But I think that has to do with the fact that we are betters. Like, once you get into Correct. the betting spectrum, you have to remove this. This has to go bye bye. Well, and- there, yes, as, as a better, a lot of my fandom has gone to the wayside. Yes, but there's a certain Saturday following Thanksgiving every single year where the super fanatic comes out and loses their shit for three and a half hours. <laughs> and I cannot wait for tomorrow. I'm so excited. I I honestly, I think I'm most happy at the fact that Ohio State fans still get excited for this game that they've won 15 of 16 years. So I mean, yeah. I guess that's a good thing. Yeah, I got to keep the little brother in check. It's fine. Um, but yes, we are here to talk some NFL lines. We are here to talk some NFL bets. Um, obviously, we had a nice little appetizer yesterday of of three games. I don't know if any of them were actually good. Uh, Detroit and Chicago was a crap fest. Um, there was more laundry on the field in Dallas yesterday than uh, disgusting. Uh, the, yeah, and then the night game where the Bills just reminded us how good they can be when they want to be good um and the ping pong saints have ponged the wrong way so yeah we were on we were on buffalo we were on the lions i think um, what no matter what we did with the cowboys game uh, we were trying to figure that out we it it went poorly but two out of three ain't bad but we got our best bets we got our player props we got our thoughts for the sunday monday slate um, and let's just jump into it, Brian, because we have a lot of games to jump into. And we'll start with your pick of the Seattle Seahawks versus Washington over 46 and a half. Yeah, it, this is a spot where I think that Washington's defense can be had through the air. I think that Seattle, for as much as they've tried to reestablish the running goal, and you hear all this talk that Pete Carroll wants to get the ball on the ground and get better at running the ball. They, they stand no chance against any team in the NFL right now with how poorly they run block. So they're yeah. going to have to put the ball in the air. Um, I, I expect to see DK and Tyler Lockett having a good game this week. Russell Wilson getting back to cooking. And then on the Washington side of the ball, they've been able to reestablish the running game with Antonio Gibson, who's looked much better. Seattle's defense has not played very well against the rush. So I think that this is a spot where Washington's able to move the ball We've seen them improve inside the red zone the last couple weeks, which was their downfall and a bunch of close losses, especially in Tampa Bay. So I think that this game, you know, it I, I expect this to be more around that 50 mark, 48-50. So getting it at 46 and a half right now, I think is a good spot for the Monday night spot. Yeah, no, I like it. I like that call quite a bit. Um, I think this is definitely, you know, I, I think we're going to get a splash game from Seattle you know, soon. And I think Russell Wilson's getting his mojo back and the offense is, is going to do enough and, and kind of get that going. And um, not only is, you know, Antonio Gibson getting back, but that seems to have unlocked some of the stuff in the passing game. Yeah. Uh, Heineke looked much more comfortable. You know, Terry McLaurin's having big performances. Uh, Logan Thomas is back this week, question mark. So that it, will be interesting to have him in that back. Direction. Um, yeah, obviously. And then, um, so we'll, we'll see, but yeah, I think, I think this could be a game that scores a few more points than, than many think. I talked about it last week. I talked about it on on our Thanksgiving show. I am taking the Titans at the full seven. I can't believe I'm getting this number, uh, at a line that was two or three going into last week. Um, but the Titans laid an ultimate egg at home. 
against the Texans. Uh, now they go to New England. I think they absolutely smash. I've already bet the money line. I've already bet the side. Um, I, I love, love, love this game. Uh, I could end up with a ton of egg on my face. And looking at some of the betting percentages, there's a lot more money on the Patriots than there are on the Titans. And the Titans are getting all the bets. So don't love that. Uh, I don't like riding with Joe Public, but they're not always wrong. So. Uh, I will take my I will take my medicine if it comes, but I, I feel like this is a great spot. Uh, the Titans come through even in a situation where we'll see what's available on Sunday. Um, obviously, Dusty Adrian Peterson got sent to the cattle farm. Um, oh, <laughs> they put him out to pasture, and uh, but we did bring in Golden Tate, which I like. Um, we'll see if he's actually activated to the or yeah. promoted to the active roster, which it's, I mean, at this point, I think if they're bringing him in, they need it, which yeah. uh, I mean, obviously Marcus Johnson's hamstring could be the reason. And I'm fingers crossed the reason if AJ Brown's also out, then it could be a little <laughs> grosser of a game. Um, we'll, we'll see, but, uh, I just, I, seven points is too many. Yeah, this is a really tough one for me, especially at that touchdown mark, because Tennessee does a lot of things well outside of their skill position players in terms of how, like, they're they're almost a mirror image of what New England tries to do on both sides of the ball. They try to be, you know, very, very good at, the, you know, their game planning and all this kind of stuff. And Mike Vrabel, he knows Bill Belichick really well, so they yep. both kind of go into this spot. Yeah, Vrabel no and John Robinson, and there's a lot of cro- love former former New Englanders um, yeah. all up in Tennessee. So, so I mean, with, with this being a full touchdown, I, I like that. It, you see it starting to creep down, which it, yeah. anything under a touchdown, I'm probably staying away. Yeah, I mean, I like is I think six are better. Like, I, I'm fine with six. I'm fine with six. I prefer six and a half. Obviously, seven is the ultimate number. Um, but I think if it gets near that, five and a half we saw a little bit or five i I, i'm you know just just avoid it at that point Uh, but like i said i bet the titans money line so if you want to ride let's ride uh let's talk about your next total dolphins versus panthers we're going under 42 here yeah i i just don't see carolina's passing offense having like being improved really at all with cam newton i do think that the threat of him running and mccaffrey has opened things up a little bit yeah. but miami has two extremely good corners on the outside that could lock up you know especially robbie anderson who's just been garbage yeah um i don't think carolina is going to be able to move the ball through the air they're going to try to run the ball i see this game as being very efficiently ran with both teams running, you know, quick passing, a lot of completions, keeping that clock moving. And then Miami really not having anything scaring the opposing teams other than Waddle. It, this, this to me is going to be one of those stinkers, kind of like the bears and lions game it, it kind of played in that high 30s. So getting this under 42, I think is a good spot. And then even better if you want to tease this up and parlay this with a with a game that you really like uh, a team to win is a is a good match yeah i think that's definitely like this is a great teaser leg if you're looking for an additional leg um i i'm with you i think both these teams are going to want to run the ball um you know cam has not looked fantastic when he has to throw sometimes he looks better than others but with those good corners on miami it's going to force a lot of stuff to the middle of the field keep that clock moving like you said a lot of cmc and yeah. uh, chuba and then obviously the the miles gaskin looking much better last week maybe they try and keep him uh rolling again and and without you know all of the pass catchers in miami pretty much it seems like every week um they're losing two or three it's it, it's gonna be a slow yeah like 17 13 and uh, let's not forget too like miami is playing some of their best defense mm-hmm. they're they're looking like the defense that we kind of expected coming into this season i think and that would be my biggest concern with the under is that either like both these teams um have playmakers on the defensive side of the ball that can yeah, turn yeah. it the other way and go for a touchdown and we're short just short fields on a yep. on an interception exactly. on a fumble definitely a possibility but yeah it, it's just one of those things i'm not counting on the offenses to be able to produce Let's at talk about level, possibly the greatest or pro- or the grossest game, depending on where you look at it. <laughs> the Houston Texans minus two and a half. The only two teams to beat the Tennessee Titans. 
Um, what what a world we're living in. I guess there's a third loss in there somewhere. But um, anyways, the the Tex you're on the Texans minus the two and a half versus the Jets. Um, Barf City. It, yeah, it. So surprisingly. The Jets actually lead the NFL in yards per game over the last three weeks. I saw this stat, but that was without Zach Wilson playing quarterback. Yeah. Now he re-enters the fold. Um, they're down to their second and third string running backs. Tevin Coleman and Ty Johnson are now going to be. Yeah, because my because Michael Carter's out. Yes. And there's a potential that Corey Davis misses too. So uh, just breaking this morning, Corey Davis was returning to practice, and he probably is going to play. But okay, we'll see. We'll see. And, and Zach's really playing because both Mike White and Joe and uh, Flacco well, are on the COVID list, right? Well, according to Robert Sala, he was going to start no matter what, but but take because they're on COVID list now, we're, yeah, yeah, it's funny. yeah, it's called yeah, exactly. spinning the narrative, Brian. Exactly. Um, this this is a spot where outside of Houston's record. They play really sound football on both sides of the ball. Their defense hasn't been that bad. I mean, it's been pretty bad, but if they're able to control the clock, especially against this poor Jets defense, this could be another one of those Bears Lions Thanksgiving Day games where it's 17 to 13 yeah. and the Jets are not able to do much. Uh Houston Tara Taylor looked good last week. They got some pieces on the outside, Nico Collins. Um, you know, Brandon Cooks, I think he's in a good spot here to produce some big numbers this weekend. I can't find his prop anywhere, probably because the NFL scared. Why would you need that? But um, yeah, I like the Texans to take home this dub, uh, you know, pretty convincingly here, especially with Zach Wilson back at back at the helm after missing multiple weeks. I mean, he had no practice time, no time to prepare. This is going to be an ugly game, and I think Houston is the less of the ugly teams. So I went over to FTN prop shop. They don't have much, but they do have uh anytime touchdown plus 145 over at FanDuel. Kind of like that. The only thing that um, I scared that it, that's going to require a deep pass mm -hmm. because once they get in close, it's going to be Tara Taylor running Tara Taylor, handing it off. Like, yeah, that requires option. them to get in close, which is not something I'm expecting as I'm taking the team totals under. Whoa! on both sides I, love it. Uh, oh. I was tempted like I, I like the idea of taking the full like the whole game but I thought this was much a much better way to attack yeah. and potentially double my odds yep. uh, because if for some reason it's 24 17 and the Texans score then I'm at least hitting one and I feel like I'll hit both I feel really good. Like Brian said, I think this is like a 14 to 10 kind of game or nine to seven or just really I could gross. definitely see this 23 to 20 or 23 yeah. to 17. And then you yep. hit both. Yeah. Yep. So I am diversifying and taking both team totals under. Uh, yeah. As Brian said, no, Zach, Zach Wilson's like hasn't been playing. He could be already down Michael Carter. He potentially is down Corey Davis. Um, you know, we'll see. And then the Texans, like as much as like they obviously clearly won last week, but like they only put up like 200 yards of total offense. Yeah. Like the Titans put up 400 and could just couldn't finish drives. Um, Tyrod, like they, they, the Texans hadn't scored a, a touchdown in like three weeks. Um, and, and only reason they scored is because Tyrod ran both of them in. So, you know, I, I do like, a, I do like Brandon cooks. I do think he can be compelling, but, um, I think both these teams stay under their team total, and I will back both of them um, separately and and hope to hit both. Uh, Brian, was there any other games that jumped out to you or anything else you were considering as you were kind of uh, running through the numbers? I think the Falcons being a favorite, I know it's Jacksonville. Like we have yeah, some really gross on the road. games. We got some we got some quote unquote good matchups last week, and obviously not all of them came through, but like. Falcons, Jags, Jets, Texans, uh, Dolphins, Panthers. Like, there's some garbage games. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, but I mean, outside of the garbage, you have some good matchups too. Like, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, when yeah. we first talked this week, I was, you know, it's kind of on Cincinnati, I think. 
I don't know how to feel that game. I it's it's a complete avoid spot for me because I, how do you count out Mike Tomlin coach teams when you get into late November, early December? It's and then they're getting healthier on the defensive side of the ball in Pittsburgh. The offense is still kind of garbage. It, they they really don't have an identity, nor are they very consistent. So it's hard to rely on them to to yeah. score or not f up like they did last week against or have the defense F up like they did last week against the Chargers. And at that currently sitting at four, it, do you trust Cincinnati to play a divisional opponent and beat them like that? Although they I think I do. Last time? It, I think I trust the Bengals. I think the Bengals are going to be able to have their way in the passing game. Um, now, Pittsburgh's getting Joe Hayden back. TJ Watt coming back is a – major difference from what this oh, yeah. defense did last week against the Chargers because now they're able to get – they should be able to get pressure on Burrow. Yeah, no, and we know about the Bengals' offensive line. It is truly garbage, so if they're able to create some pressure. And um, and Minka is coming back this week. Yeah. And then uh, the, the, the last game, real quick, has got to be – Vikings 49ers. I think that's one of the most intriguing matchups of the week. Forget about Rams, Packers, Vikings 49ers. Both of these teams need a W in order to stay in that playoff race for the wild card. Yep. And it's kind of like. And especially with New Orleans crazy. losing yesterday, that their door yeah. is open. Um, I think it's going to be really compelling. Both these teams seem to be hitting kind of a little bit of a stride lately. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm I'm with you there. Um, and Tampa Indy. Um, I'm an, I just added Indy to my card plus three and a half on over at DraftKings. Um, I think if you can get three in the hook, I think you have to do it. Um, I know there's some concern about what Jonathan Taylor may or may not be able to do, um, but I think this Bucks defense, the rush defense, is is more you can run on them. I I know a lot of teams haven't really been able to. But I think that's also, more a product of teams abandoning the run against them. Right. More so, so it's a combination of teams are. not willing to stick to it and the the um, runners that have gone against it. Like, you know, Antonio Gibson was able to obviously get 64 yards and two touchdowns, um, on, but it took 24 carries to get there. Before there was Mark Ingram and Alex Amara and Khalil Herbert got 100 yards against this defense. Miles Sanders in nine carries got 56 yards. Like you can run on this. And John, 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 uh, Jonathan Taylor yeah. has been incredible and has been running all over everybody. And Buffalo was awesome against the run until they faced Jonathan Taylor and gave up five touchdowns. Well, it also two of note in this matchup, the Bucks haven't really played a single team with this kind of offensive, like run blocking offensive yep. line yep. since maybe the Cowboys or the Rams back in weeks one and three. So yeah. that, that definitely plays into that as well with their defense playing so well. Yeah. So I, I think there's an opportunity there. I, I missed the boat last week against Buffalo and hopefully I'm not jumping on a little too late as the, as the ship starts to sink, but I think there's, but I think if you can get three and a half with the home team, you got to do it. Uh, let's talk about your week 12 teaser, Brian. Six pointer. Break it down for us. All right. So, since, since we just talked about that, it's a perfect segue into one of my entries into this, and that's the Colts. I'm teasing them up from three, three and a half to getting nine, nine, nine and a half in this spot. For all the for all of the reasons Kyle and I just explained, and then when you're looking at the Buccaneers, they're winless or no, they're one and three on the road this year, and their only win was a two point victory at New England. So they're not playing good on the road, especially going up against really good running teams, which I expect Indianapolis to be able to kind of have their way on the offense in, in the trenches in this yeah. game. And then you know if you're able to get kind of pressure on on Brady from the outside, which the the Colts can do that with Quiddy Pay coming up, coming you know off the off the edge, and then they have big old DeForest Buckner coming up the middle. This is going to be a tough test for the Buccaneers. I think this is going to be a really close game, but just to be safe, give me the nine. I going think that back makes to the beginning, sense. Yeah, going back to the beginning of the day, Eagles at Giants. The Giants are a mess. They suck. The Eagles want to run the ball fifty times a game. This game is not going to be high scoring. I expect another slobber knocker the total is set at 45 and a half 46 so i teased this up you know 51 and a half to 52 taking the under 
Vikings, we already talked about them on the road in San Francisco. The Vikings are kind of hitting their stride. San Francisco, same thing. But Minnesota has played probably the most close games of the season. So teasing them from a three-point dog up to nine just makes too much sense to me. And then my last one, Chargers at Broncos. The Chargers have a really good passing offense. Denver defends the pass really well. Denver doesn't throw the ball very good, and the Chargers have a really good pass defense. So I expect this game to be played on the ground. And again, this total is set at 48 with the expectation of the Chargers' high-powered offense doing things. Denver's offense hasn't really looked good the last couple of weeks. So I tease this for 48 up to 4, and I'm taking another under. So for the week, my four-card part, my four-card teaser, my four-play teaser, Eagles at Giants under 51 and a half, 52, wherever you can get it. Vikings plus nine, Chargers at Broncos under 54, and Colts plus nine. I like it. Um, and I forgot a pick when we were talking about other games. Uh, I took Denver plus the three. I think this is going to be a game where the best case scenario, Chargers come out with a with a short with a short win. And I yeah. think I have a lot more outs. And I think the Chargers are a team that likes, like obviously like last week, they'll they'll take their opportunities and they'll move the ball and they'll do lots of stuff. But when you're like super, like uh, like you're not, you don't get out of your comfort zone and you, you stay to your principles and you do your things, you know, they, they want that opportunity to take advantage of something you're doing wrong. And Denver really doesn't do that. So I think they can keep it close. I think it's going to be a great, like, you know, not a, like you said, you like the under. I think that makes ten, a ton of sense as well. If you want to back, you know, do a little same game parlay with with the Bron- with the Broncos and the under. I think that could make some sense. But um, I'm taking I'm taking Denver here if I can get the full three. Well, also of note in that matchup is Bradley Chubb. He's 50-50 to play this week, which would be a huge boost to that Broncos pass rush. Which I know the Chargers. Um, offensive tackles have played extremely well this year, but if you can get some pressure on Justin Herbert, you can he you can create some issues for this Chargers offense. Hundred uh, percent. A few props before we uh, talk about our best bets and get up out of here. Um, you know, I mentioned we've we've talked about it a couple times. Jonathan Taylor's prop is only seventy nine and a half yards. Um, I think he can get to eighty, and I know that's a risky proposition, but I think he can absolutely get there. Um, I know it's Tampa Bay. I know this game could get wonky, and if Tampa gets up big, it's probably not going to happen. Um, but I still think there's enough, and I think there's a you know a big run gets them, you know, sixty percent of the way there, and and I'm feeling pretty good about it. So I will take that. Yeah, I uh, I'm looking at the at the props that are just slowly being released right now. Yeah. Uh, Miles Sanders rushing yards prop right now set at fifty nine and a half with the likelihood of no Jordan Howard. I think that this is a big spot for Sanders to reestablish himself as the legit number one running back for this Eagles offense as it still befuddles me beyond belief that they do not deploy this guy more in that offense. What about Saquon on the other side? Um, I know last week it didn't really go great and they kind of didn't, they were like, you know, uh, Jason Garrett, the clapper is out and now we have the cafeteria man in. Um, <laughs> uh, Freddie Kitchens got the kitchens going. Um, uh, I could see, I could see Saquon fifty-two and a half. Like I think both these guys can get to sixty. So I, I, I think that could make some sense. I will say, I do think that you see a little bit more Booker out of this backfield because he, to me, he's looked like the more decisive runner. That is not trying to compare these guys athletically or their skill yeah. set, but as far as like Giants, like trying to get yardage like chunks of yards i think he's probably better on first and second down in terms of just get us a positive gain rather than trying to bust it out for the big one every single time so i think he kind of eats in the saquon's usage slightly i think the vikings niners i think there's potential with the receivers i think iuke um and debo both make sense 54 and a half 67 and a half jimmy's been much better throwing the ball the offensive line has been much much better and i think that's doing a lot to help. And then uh, obviously you can throw on the Vikings. I mean, the teams are just a well, week after week, just chucking it all over this team. Aaron Rodgers just threw for almost 400 yards last week, uh, four touchdowns. Um, and then Thielen, Thielen at 60 yards is really interesting because he's not getting like huge chunk plays. And obviously he's more of a touchdown threat with eight on the season, but 
60 yards feels really gettable against this Niner secondary that I think you can absolutely throw on. Yeah, I, I, I like that game from a fantasy perspective, from a prop play perspective, as I expect both offenses to be able to do things. The game that I'm kind of looking at is going back to that Tampa Colts matchup. Um, I really expect Rob Gronkowski to find the end zone this week with Mike Evans dealing with back issues. There's no telling if that'll flare up during the game. I think Gronk kind of reinserted himself last week as Brady's you know, favorite target over the middle and in terms of the red zone. So I think Gronk finds the end zone. It's, it, I don't see any numbers for that yet, but um, I'm, I'm liking that wherever that's set at. And then staying in that game, Carson Wentz passing yards total right now is set at 245 and a half. I'm going to take the over in that spot because I do think that Indy, even if they even if they do commit to running the ball, that's probably going to force Tampa Bay a little bit to bring the safeties in a little bit closer. T.Y. Hilton, for as old as he is, you know he's still good for one or two boom plays. And then Michael Pittman, if he sees one-on-one coverage on the outside, could bust a big one or or a couple. And I think that Wentz is going to need to put the ball in the air in order if they want to beat Tampa Bay. Yeah, no, I think I think that makes a ton of sense. Um, okay. We went through some props. We went through some games we like. We talked some other numbers. What is your best bet for week number 12? This is going to be really disgusting, but it's going to be the Texans minus two and a half. I love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick to my guns and maybe I'll, you know, this will end up horribly and people can, get up in the comments and laugh at me the whole time, but Titans plus seven, that, that's just a bad number. It's just incorrect. Um, I, I don't, I'm not really sure what we're doing here. <sighs> okay, Brian, we talked some games. We talked some stuff. I, I guess there's only one thing left for us. And that is the beautiful part about being on the on the boards over here, because you can just I make stuff like that say, happen. The, you definitely just revealed who's in charge of, <laughs> of, the, of the show here. Hey, look uh, at me, I'm the captain here. All right, let's go. Um, good, good week of games. Good week of content. Uh, all the worst luck to you tomorrow. I hope it goes absolutely terrible. Um, I'm sure. Uh, we, we will chat hopefully next week, uh, assuming this podcast is still alive. <laughs> um, that's Brian Twining. I'm Kyle Robert. Thanks to all of our new subscribers. Thanks to everybody yeah, thanks, hopping yeah. in this week. Um, again, we, we're up a few more this week. We really appreciate that. If you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you smash that subscribe. Let us know down in the comments who you're backing for the Sunday, Monday slate. Uh, prop bets, uh, teams, uh, totals, whatever it may be. That's Brian Twiney. I'm Kyle Robert, and we'll talk to you guys next time. Beat Ohio. Beat TTUN.